On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we're discussing more about Brandon Hagel, what he means to his Lightning team, as well as discussing, is last night's win the best game of 2023? We also talk about the game coming up tomorrow in D.C., all that and more on Locked On Lightning. You're Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Locked On Lightning. Let's just a reminder that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Use the promo code Locked On NHL to get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. As always, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed audio form. We're also available on our YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to that channel as well. On this episode, we're talking about Brandon Hagel. I mean, is there anything, is there any such thing as too much Brandon Hagel talk? It is, there is not. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about yesterday's game. Is that the best game of 2023 as well as tomorrow's game in D.C.? And as you can all tell, uh, I have a little bit of a cold. What else is new? <laughs> I know that was gross. I'm sorry. But <laughs> we are here on Friday night, the Friday, the last Friday before Christmas. I hope everyone's done with their Christmas shopping and got all the gifts that they needed for those that they love and care about. And the Lightning definitely got one last gift for this fan base as they won uh, a stellar one at home against the defending Stanley Cup champion, the Vegas Golden Knights at home. And obviously the big story, at least on this side of things, was the big time second period performance from this game, uh, from this team. It, that was kickstarted all by the fight that Brandon Nagel had against Ivan Barbashev. And that, like I said last night, I mean, we're talking about it. 24 hours later, and I still can't get over just that fight. Uh, just what happened afterwards as the Lightning scored four unanswered goals on that in that in that period. Uh, they ended up, you know, having the game tied, which you know it's is what it is. But I thought that for the most part that that game that that fight in that second period definitely set the tone for the rest of the game for this lightning team and it was all according to Brandon Hagel it was it was all because of Brandon Hagel excuse me and it's we we have to talk about it more because when a player has that big of an effect on a on a game where mind you he didn't even score a point. He didn't score a goal. He didn't, I don't even think his plus minus was anything to brag about. I don't even think he had like, I don't even think he broke. I don't think he went above me even on that. I think maybe if anything, he had like one positive. And that shows you how big of an effect this guy has. I mean, he is just, you know, you take away the Nikita Kucherov storyline from this year where Kucherov is just just putting in heart trophy performances almost on a nightly basis for this team. He's leading the league in, in goals and points. I mean, most nights when he does score, he's scoring two goals at a time. But Brandon Hagel, I mean, amidst all the stars, not even including Nikita Kucherov, you know, take the Stamkoses out, take the Brandon Points out, take the Victor Hedmans out, the Vasilevsky conversation out. When you look at the the just the conversation about why are the Lightning where they are in terms of the positivity, it's Brandon Hagel. Brandon Hagel has been one of the unsung heroes. I mean, you put him on. I mean, there are a few teams in this league 
that I could think of where you could put him on that team and he's automatically the best player. And that's not exactly, that's not an exaggeration. And that's not even like a, a hit at those players on that team saying that they're bad. It's because Brandon Hagel has had such a great year this year thus far through 34 games. He's had 10 goals. He's had 28 points. His plus minus is in the negatives. I mean, it's only a negative two, which is not bad at all. But when you look at his body of work, when you look at what he is able to do and, and the best example is last night. I mean, this guy has taken his game to a whole nother level. And and when you have a guy that was originally brought in in, in a trade that, to be <laughs> to be frank, and boy, did, I mean, I, I'll admit when I'm wrong. I mean, I was not wild about that trade, you know, especially trading Bo Kachuk, who I really, really liked. And I had high hopes for him to be a very good player. Trading him went along with, with uh, Taylor Radish. I thought that, you know, that was kind of a premature trade in terms of the fact that I thought the Lightning were trade. You know, I never like to trade two players at a time for one guy, especially when you have a guy like Braden, Brandon Hagel, who, you know, we had the conversation at the time when the trade was done. Uh, you know, he still had a lot to prove at that point in his career. Uh, and, and, you know, we always had the conversation and always said, you know, is this guy a product of playing alongside Patrick Kane or is he a product of his own talent? And he, I mean, the conversation, you know, that we have the answer now. It's because of his his talent. But I think since he's come to Tampa Bay, it's it's a whole different. He's evolved into this whole different player that I don't think a lot of people expected him to be. He's gone from just being a goal scorer. And and yes, you know, despite what you might think about his numbers, I mean, his career high in goals was last year in 30. He's a goal scorer and he's only 25. He He's going to score more than 30 in his career. I think he's on the same trajectory as what we saw with. Braden Point, you know, it's a little bit longer. It's a little later in his career, given you look at, you know, the amount of games this guy's played in his first couple of years. I mean, he scored 25 in his his second full year in the league. But when, 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 you, when you really look at what more is there to his game, I mean, the guy has played phenomenally in the physical part of his game this year. Far better than I think anybody could have probably have expected from him. And the fact that he has taken it more to he has taken it to a higher level this year by not only fighting, uh, just playing physical along the boards, doing little things, uh, but but having like that kind of like that that honey badger kind of aggressiveness that 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 won't back down attitude we saw that last night i mean he had no business fighting ivan barber Chef, who like i said on the episode last night where i saw you know i was like oh cool hegel's fighting who is he fighting he's fighting barber Chef. and you know barber Chef, you know, contrary, you know, don't don't look at what the the TV gives you. You got to go to a hockey game. Ivan Barbashev is a big dude. If I had to pick any player on this Lightning team to fight Ivan Barbashev, uh, it Brandon Hagel's not even sniffing the top three players. I mean, I'm I'm picking Jano. I'm picking Paul. And. Maybe Chernak or Sergachev. But I mean, not only do you go into that situation after your 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 teammate gets hit, which was a clean hit on Torelli, but to go out there and and to step up to a guy who really could just end your night with one punch, hold your own, and then skate off into the penalty box with the biggest cojones 
mindset and vibe that I have seen from any lightning player and that I haven't seen from any lightning player in quite some time. I mean, I mean, what a better way to endear yourself if you haven't already done so. And he has to not only your teammates, but to your, to, to the fan base, because from that point on that arena was rocking. It was absolutely rocking. It, it had not only playoff vibes, it had Stanley cup final vibes. And and that was the thing that I really changed the game. I, I believe really changed the game the game because when you look from there on, I mean, even when the Lightning well ended up having the game tied uh late into the third period, and then ended up coming back from you know on the game winning goal from Nick Paul, I didn't feel even though they were down at two nothing after that fight, I didn't feel like they were ever really in danger of losing that game. Even when Vegas came back and tied it. This, this, the the amount of energy and the level of energy that he injected into that team. I mean, you can't buy that. You can't teach that. That that Brandon Hagel's got that, that dog in him, and he has the potential to be a franchise great. And I'm calling it now. I know this is only year three out of Hags, but he is just has really, really just won so many points with me, and I can't wait to see what he does for the rest of the season because, like I said, he's got 10 now, and I firmly believe that he'll reach 30, he'll get more than 30, and I think with the way he's played this year, uh, he could potentially eclipse 30 uh, this season. So we'll continue to watch Hagel as the season progresses. I mean, the guy is just... I think he's the most lovable player in Bolts Nation right now. I mean, give me another player and a reason why. I'm not saying anybody else is loved any less. I love all my Lightning players just the same, except Hagel is probably the favorite right now. So coming up, we'll be talking about last night's game. Is that the best game of 2023? Certainly not the best game of the season because we still got the entirety January to April, plus any playoff games that might be played coming up after that but we'll talk about that is that the best game of the season uh, of 2023 as well as looking towards saturday's game against the, the washington capitals all that coming up and more but first let's talk about one of our sponsors and that is our friends over at sleeper now a new hl season brings all sorts of possibilities brandon hagel could score 50 goals and the lightning could host the stanley cup and you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win a with a, win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy contests. All you have to do is pick Brandon Hagel, Nick Paul, and Nikita Kucherov to record more or less than their Sleeper projections from for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minuses, and more in a given game. So use the promo code Locked On NHL you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. So as always, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcast or it should be an audio form. You could also follow us on our YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button below. So as soon as the newest uh, and, and hit that that notification button, so as soon as the newest episode drops, you will be notified. And yeah, we're we're riding the waves of this phenomenal lightning win the other night against the family Stanley Cup champions. And now we're talking, and I know maybe I'm a little bit premature, and and maybe this is recency bias, but I don't care because. Is that game the best game of 2023? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because when you look at the other games from the 2023 part or portion of last year's season, nothing really jumps out to you. I mean, maybe the month of February, maybe parts of January. But this Lightning team was off all year. They're, they They never they could never get to the point to where I think all of us could have mutually ha have agreed 
that this team got to the point where they were ready to be a good hockey team. And what I mean by that is that this team was not playing consistent. Even when they won games, it was by the skin of their teeth. And I I always felt, even going into that playoff series against Toronto, I never felt like this team was going to put themselves in a situation to where they were going to win the series. They were definitely towards, especially towards the end, uh, putting themselves in situations to where they could win games. I mean, they, those last two games, they wanted the series. If, if you had to twist my arm to list the top three teams up until last night, I mean, the top three wins of up until last night, I mean, those last two wins of that Leaf series and then the game against Boston maybe are the best wins of 2023. With those wins being 1-2 and I guess Boston just to kind of fit in this season. But those were games where those were one out of desperation. They weren't one out of talent. And, and then on the other side of that, the Leafs were just... We all know how the Leafs are in the playoffs, and and especially as this series goes on, what kind of team they could potentially turn into. But last night just took on a whole nother level of inspiration. Um, it, it revealed a lot about the character of this team. It revealed a lot about the character of and and mental fortitude of some of the players on this team one of which we spoke about earlier in this segment of this show and i think that the reason why it's one of the best games of 2023 is because it reveals it 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 makes us aware as a fan base the ongoing evolution of the tampa bay lightning and it's very, I, I feel like it's very few times that we are able to realize that in the moment and appreciate for what it is. This team is going through a metamorphosis. That's what it comes down to. And I think fans, when they look at this team, you know, and, and this all goes on the, the dependency and the hope that this team continues and to play well and stays consistent and brings what they brought brings the 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 kind of play that they had in this game and the previous games into dc and then new york and florida and the rest of the nhl season but i think we've hit a point because we've been talking about it all year all season, not all calendar year, but I mean, we can also say that we have because technically we have. We've been talking about it all 2023 that the Lightning kind of know what they need to do to win games. But when you see it against a team that I think is the, the overall consensus, the best team in the league, and this team for the most part, except maybe the early parts of that third period. And, you know, I didn't, like I said, I didn't think that the they played bad in the first period. This team knew from the get-go what needed to be done in order to get things going against Vegas. And Vegas didn't have an answer. The only reason why they tied the game is because the Lightning let them, basically. They let them off the hook, and that's that's a lightning issue. That's not a Vegas being better thing. That's a that's a lightning issue. And now, for really the 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 first clear cut time, we could confidently say that the Lightning have a hundred percent a winning formula to win hockey games, and you saw it in full effect the other night. And we know, and I've been saying this for a while, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the shoulder i mean i'm just spitting facts here people 
at the end of the day, when the Lightning play their four lines, and I'm not just talking about just rolling out guys for even amounts of minutes. I'm talking about guys contributing from every level, from the first to the fourth line forwards to the first to the third line defensive combinations. When you get all production from all those lines, sp splattered with some Vasilevsky esque highlight saves, which you know that doesn't necessarily constitute he's catching pucks behind his net i mean behind his back it, it means that he's making the big saves when they count i would say 95 percent of the time the lightning win those games and we saw it in full effect last night and it's not a complicated recipe and this is all mind you without mikhail sergachev who like i've stated I was very nervous coming into this game considering you're already playing shaky hockey and now you're missing your second best defenseman on the team. And and the Lightning may be without him for the foreseeable future. But the Lightning also proved to themselves last night and to us that they could very well win without him. For how long that remains to be seen. But what I could say confidently at this point in time, that the Lightning played their best game of 2023. And as they're sitting around reminiscing about the last 12 months of 2023, the wins, the losses, they have to take with them as they file away some of the losses. They have to take with them the win that they had against the Vegas Golden Knights and say, we have it. We have what we need to do in our lap. It is up to us to go out there and do the right thing. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that. I mean, I, I, everyone's going to have different opinions about who, what, what is their favorite win or the best win, really? Because that's really what the question is. What is the best win of 2023? But I firmly believe that's what it is. Uh, and it's not just recency bias. I mean, you just the energy the 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 fans the players feeding off that i i i'm not a big wrestling fan but i know that they have like a five star match thing how they grade the matches in WWE that's kind of how i would imagine that this is a we could grade this game this was a five star game five star performance from Tampa Bay Lightning so coming up will be previewing the game in Washington against the Capitals, all that coming up. But first, let's talk about our last sponsors of the day, and that's our friends over at eBay Motors. Now, passion, drive, and passions and patience is what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride or die every time or your money back because eBay Motors, with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. So with all the parts you need, all the prizes you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So as always, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a give us a follow wherever podcasts are to distribute in audio form. You could also subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up below below this video as well as hit that subscribe button as well as drop a comment below to join in on the conversation. We talked about Brandon Hagel. I mean, his contributions to this lighting team, what he means to this team in terms of scoring as well as just his all around play. We also talked about last night's game. Is that the best game of 2023? I seem to think so. And that's not just recency bias. I mean, you, you stack up just all the aspects of that game and you put that up against everything else, except maybe those two last two wins of the series against Toronto. I'd be hard pressed to find anything else that is remotely close in terms of a very good all around win. Um, but we're wrapping things up and, and, and the lightning hope to carry over that energy, that drive, that, 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 that style of play that they had in that game into tomorrow night's game against 
the Washington Capitals, who are currently fourth in the Metropolitan Division. They are currently uh, sitting one in the one spot. Well, tied for two, really, uh, with the Carolina Hurricanes in points in the wild card spot. And the Lightning has pushed have pushed themselves up into the conversation, back into the conversation, only a point out of the 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 wild card position that last wild card position but then again that's going to be changing in 24 hours because uh the red wings did win tonight they beat the flyers in a shootout <clears throat> so they should be leapfrogging tampa bay in the standings and so we're talking about the, the capitals a team that has never really remotely scared me just because they they the their team i mean they have players that could hurt you uh Kuznetsov is one but they're they their team other than Ovechkin who like i said i'm not entirely scared of and and just just so we're aware he only has six goals this year <clears throat> They're a team that is somewhat similar to the Lightning in terms of they, they are constantly going from game to game to find their identity. I mean, the Lightning, I think, do know who they are, especially after last night. I think they, they know who they are. They know what they need to do, um, and they know how to win games. This team, as good as they've been this year, the Washington Capitals, 17-9-4. Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren, the two goalie system out there in Washington. And then you got like a cloister of players who I am very fond of on this Capitals team, Dylan Strom, uh, Anthony Manta, Mantha, Yevgeny uh, Kuznetsov, and Sonny Milano. You have guys on that team that, that could score, that could put up points. Um, I think, you know, as much as we look at Ovechkin and, you know, you always got to be wary of him. Um, it's the same story with him as well as the same story that we've been talking about for the last couple of years with, with Alexander Ovechkin. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a matter of just the league. The league has changed scoring wise and defensively. The goaltenders aren't going to be getting beat on one-timers like that that often. I mean, granted, I have not watched a second of Capitals hockey, but at the same time, I mean, at this point in his career, he, I would doubt that Ovechkin's dangling through anybody like that. But Dylan Strom, I look at the box score and, and, and the stats, and Dylan Strom's the guy I got to look at and say, you know, especially with 13 goals, other than Ovechkin, Dylan Strom's the guy you got to keep an eye out for. And on top of that, you know, you look at the plus minuses on this team, you know, it's not very good. It's not great, but it's not that poor. And at the same time, Darcy Kemper, 8 6 and 2, goals against average 2.9, and a save percentage of 900. This is a team that, to me at least, you know, especially in a very competitive division, they're a team that the Lightning need to be on their best behavior, similar to a performance with what we saw against Vegas. Um, but the Lightning need to play to their strengths, and that's scoring on special teams. Lightning are top three in the league on the power play, whereas Washington's almost last in their power play. Uh, and the Lightning are going to need to come out and, and take advantage of those power plays because, you know, Washington's top 10 in PK percentage. And, you know, that's a team that if the Lightning don't capitalize, if, if you know, I'm not going to, I'm not saying we should expect this every single night, but uh, the Lightning, I would expect to be at least 50%. You know, they get four, they got to get, they get four chances, they got to get a two goals. That's just the way it is. It's non negotiable. Um, if the, you know, I know the Lightning are only two points out of a playoff spot, but, 
like I always say it, and and I know it's a cliche, and we if you've been a listener for a lot a while now, you know how much I hate cliches. Uh, every point counts, and that's just the facts of the matter at this point in the season. Uh, the Lightning need to win the special teams game. They need to win the faceoff game. Uh, in my opinion, the Lightning have gotten so much better over the course of the season, especially with Luke Lynn Denning's play, Nick Paul's faceoff abilities. Uh, those two guys, along with Sorelli, have really done a phenomenal job in the faceoff circle this year. Uh, the Lightning need to really take control of the faceoff circle as well as the neutral zone. Um, if you allow that, if you're able to do that, as well as have somewhat of a presence in front of the goaltender, whether it be Kemper, Kemper of Lingren, I think you're setting yourself up for a pretty good night. Um, you know, mo the entirety of your team is pretty much intact. Um, Sergachev is out, but I think Hayden Fleury has played at a level that it's we're able to live with that. You're going to have Vasilevsky in net. And then you have Nikita Kucherov, who has played phenomenal all season long. Brandon Hagel is coming off a high that we have not seen him on at all in his Lightning tenure or really in his career. Uh, Steven Stamkos, I think he still has a little bit more spark on the fire. Um, I, I think he's played very well over the last month. And uh, even Nick Pervix, I thought, played well in, in that last game against Vegas. Um so you have a lighting team that's playing well. You have a you have a you you're coming off with a ton of momentum against the Stanley Cup uh the the reigning Stanley Cup champions. <clears throat> and you know, you got an opportunity to stretch a a two a, a two a a winning streak even further. And you know, but you got to go out there and do the right thing like I always say. The Lightning need to go out there, make good decisions. Um go ahead and get that that away record up a little bit more you know you're coming into a game that you're six ten and two with uh the lightning needed to be better they can't just be a one-trick pony and dominate at home and and just be completely absent on the road um so i'm expecting lightning to get off to a good start i'm expecting them to play disciplined hockey and to really take advantage of their opportunities on the special teams and we'll be back on monday or or Probably we'll probably drop an episode. Probably I, I'm hoping Monday, um, but if not, we'll be dropping two episodes on Tuesday, the 26th. So keep an eye out for that. Um, if I don't talk, if I don't hear from you or if I don't talk to any of you before then, please uh, have a safe, Merry Christmas. Enjoy your weekend. Make good decisions. Uh, and let's all hope and, and ask Santa Claus for one more lightning win. Uh, over the weekend so in the meantime that's been it for this episode of locked on lightning part of locked on podcast network i'm your host adam tanker i'll talk to you in the next one